Hello and welcome to the channel. This is the start of the OP071 piece TCG unofficial English commentary of the Spring 3v3 championship. Look at that new serial ace coming into the game hello welcome my name is jake you can also call me atrocious and we're back with our first tournament official commentary or unofficial commentary of an official tournament being streamed after the world championships very very excited for this one it's the first op07 tournament as well and especially in a 3v3 format there's going to be a lot of matches that we are going to cover especially because this is wave one of the spring three on three so get excited get buckled up i'm so excited to get you all to this now just a heads up in this this is not my official stream or anything like that as usual, I am just watching and doing my own commentary over the official live stream. So if you want to check out the actual live stream, maybe not hear me talk or anything like that. You want to hear the official casters and whatnot. I will provide a link in the description below as always. Thank you so much and let's get into our first match. So I think this is going to be our first three on three in this one. So pretty interesting three on three on the left side. We've got probably more of what I would have guessed kind of somewhat of the big three of this format we got Trafalgar Law starter deck 10 starter deck 13 black yellow Luffy and the new OP07 Rob Lucci and it looks like they're going to be facing off against a little bit different of a team you have the Trafalgar Law in their starter deck 10 in my opinion one of the best decks in format but then you have yellow and L a very strong deck in its own right arguably one of the better yellow decks especially mono yellow decks in the format and then you have Zoro here Zoro is kind of the more spicy pick but with Diablo Jambe with just rushing down your opponent you could just go much faster than them and really just outpace them early could be a strong pick and it looks like we're getting set up now can't exactly tell who our stream game is going to be usually they'll just showcase mainly one game this game closest to us with this character right here on the right and then as that game finishes they'll move down the line if games are still going on and showcase those games so I'm personally hoping for like Rob Lucci. Um, honestly, it's a deck that we haven't seen yet on this channel on the stream with it being a new OPO7 deck. And I'm just really hoping that we get to see it. I can't tell what it is. I, I can't tell because I think they're alternates. It looks like it's Zoro versus Law. So this should be a really interesting matchup in itself overall. Really curious to see how this one goes overall as our player on the left mulligans, the Trafalgar Law player, and the player on the right also mulligans now trafalgar law might not be super different in opo7 compared to ebo1 as our trafalgar law player is going first in this game but with the addition of the new 2k sanji in opo7 it has really propelled the deck and continuously propelled the deck as it has the last couple sets since it released in that starter deck in terms of the zoro deck that one is debatably even less different than what we've usually seen in previous formats prior to op07 the newest cards usually in these decks in the Zoro decks are something like the gum gum king kong gatling in op06 so maybe we'll see some spice in there it is on a team that is in the higher portion of this three on three spring wave one so i'm excited to see how this one goes over all the life is distributed on each side four on the trafalgar law side and five on the Zoro. We'll see what they got. It looks like the Zoro has at least a Nico Robin in hand and a Bad Manners course kick as well as some other cards in there. It looks like a Nami searcher in there. Maybe a starter deck Luffy rush character. It's hard to tell at this angle. Hopefully they give us a little look at the hand and it looks like the law player has a pretty decent hand overall. They've got the Sachin Penguin right. 
for the uh, kind of first turn bottom decking shenanigans that they got going on some Beppo's Law and Zoro Juro to really get the momentum swing. The Zoro Juro is something that is seen off and on in these decks and it looks like speaking of OP07 that's a monkey D dragon in this deck that three cost character right there is a rush Zoro so some exciting stuff in both of these decks I'm so stoked to see this one it looks like it's going to be a good match I'm excited to see where this goes leave your guesses in the comments below don't cheat don't skip to the end to find out who the winner is as we go into this one it'll be really curious because especially with law going first right it'll have the opportunity to swing first and then especially bottom decking the characters we'll see if the zoro runs out of steam in a sense and with no one dawn play looks like the trafalgar law is going to pass as the zoro draws a card for turn it looks like it was the mogura and they're gonna start off with a quick nami so looking at the top five, trying to find a straw. It looks like they got Marco Buggy in here. I think that's a Sanji there. It looks like a Rush Zoro. Thinking about the Rush Zoro, maybe just trying to get as many swings in. This would be the second Rush Zoro that they have in their hand in this game. Could just be good of getting value off of those characters before they get bottom decked, right? And so on the three dawn turn now, looks like it's just going to be a 5k swing at life. Going to be taking that one and playing that Zoro Juro right there. So the Zoro Juro is a really nice card and inclusion in this deck. I really like that idea to be able to ramp Dawn, and it looks like on the four dawn turn now, we'll see exactly what the Zoro wants to do right now. They could go ahead and swing a six and a six on the leader, and then also one of their rush Zoros in hand, or they could just swing with the Nami, right? Attach the dawn to the Nami and swing with it before it gets bottom decked or anything like that that is a scenario but starting off swinging five right here so taking that one and no trigger pulling a promo film gordon off of that that's a really nice card to get and to be able to set up your bottom decking for specific characters and they're going to be playing the Mogura and the Mogura is going to get that Nami to swing and I do like this play honestly you get the power boost of a 5k Nami swing right slightly minimal but it's enough to be able to match the leader and then probably with that three dawn laying down that Zoro that you found off the Nami to get three 5k pokes in here just really put on the pressure and it's a really interesting situation for the starter deck law right because the starter deck law has all of these ramp cards these all important ramp cards but they can't discard them too frequently right you do have three beppos in hand so you could get rid of a couple of those maybe one or two maybe the trafalgar law as well but they're going to end up taking the life going down to two it's a rage you right there the rage is going to be nice and this 5k rush Zoro is going to swing and they're not going to let this one slide getting rid of one of the Beppos like I said earlier so two to four life now at this point it's going to be the five dawn turn for law I'm going to be drawing a missile Sunday for turn the missile Sunday is something that we see on and off in the deck really good off the trigger and also just ramping and drawing in this deck whenever you need it it is a 5,000 power character so you can play it down off of your leader effect so a very interesting inclusion overall this baroque works character and so starting off swinging five at somewhere it could be at the nami could be at the zoro uh probably going to be at either lead or the nami i would imagine that they'll probably maybe or maybe they're swinging at the zoro they could swing at the zoro bottom deck the nami and uh try to do some board control right here we'll see exactly we do know that they have the gordon in hand so this could be something i like the nami and then use the gordon to minus the zoro to then bottom deck it could be really really nice and so really thinking about what they want to do interesting that they didn't use the zoro juro swinging first it would have been interesting to maybe see the zoro juro swing 
into the Nami to try to get the KO. I don't think I would have hated a play similar to that, but we're looking at what it's going to be really just trying to eye up what the potential possibilities are. You do have a couple counter cards in there, that 2K Brook and 2 Robins, the Robins, in my opinion, are not really going to be valuable as you saw a pitch off the counter there because as Zoro, you don't really play any like zero cost, really low power blockers or characters that are really annoying because they're probably not going to allow a Gordon to stay if it's not turn one right on a one done turn. Maybe you play the Gordon and you have it there ready to go and you can pop it with the Robin but aside from that you're probably not going to be able to do it unless you have something like a Fire Fist in play and especially with the Monkey Day Dragon who knows if they actually do have that uh, card, that Fire Fist in OP05, I believe it was. So, looks like they're going to be resting five for the Missile Sunday. Going to be ramping and drawing a card overall. Going to be drawing a Gordon, a non-counter card right there. And then going to be using the leader effect, potentially, it looks like, on here. So, thinking about exactly what they want to do they did get a nice old don ramp which is really really good especially in a matchup like this going to be swinging with that zoro juro at the nami like i mentioned to get an active dawn right here that active dawn is going to be arrested playing the raise max to lower the zoro and then use leader effect to put that zoro in the bottom of the deck really really cool play right there really utilizing and seeing the missile sunday with the zoro juro and with that leader effect the second part of it going to be playing that raju to draw some cards excellent excellent job right there really just maximizing the amount of dawn that you have going into your next turn while also capitalizing on clearing the board as they top deck another rush zoro so another rush zoro is going to potentially provide some problems for the uh, Trafalgar Law player, but with another Gordon in hand, they could probably get rid of it. And going into a sixth on turn, next with that Zoro Juro, this Zoro leader on the right really has to answer to the Zoro Juro. You cannot let the Zoro Juro continuously swing. So going to be attaching one of the Don, activating the leader effect, going to be attaching one to the Magura. The Magura is going to be swinging 4K at the Zoro Juro. So really just saying, okay, do you have a 1K counter in hand that you really want to get rid of at this point in the game? And honestly, I don't know. Maybe I would get rid of the Trafalgar Law Blocker that they have in hand. They're thinking about one of the Beppos. I don't hate that idea either. You do already have another Beppo in hand. So having multiple Beppos is not necessarily a much needed game plan at this point. So with four Don left overall right now, going to be swinging six now. Who knows at where it looks like it's going to be a Sachi and penguin counter is probably a leader then i would assume if all they needed was a 2k counter to get out of that swing to get up to seven so interesting that they again didn't go for the zoro juro just really committing the magura and that's it on that play so thinking about where they want to go probably going to be using the rest of the dawn for something like the zoro but maybe thinking about whether they want to attach the dawn because right the zoro is going to be 6k with that leader effect on the zoro leader maybe fainting a uh, maybe fainting a radical beam in hand we do know that zoro decks sometimes play events you see the bad manners course kick in their hand right there but also stuff like radical beam diablo jambe king kong gatling um, even though none of those gatling and jambe are counter cards still things that they play in their hand so really uh interesting situation right here could see the dawn attachment right now to the zoro i think they're really trying to evaluate whether or not a 6k swing on the zoro juro is different than a 7k swing at this point in the game how much does this law player really value the Zoro Juro, right? If you swing six into it, they need 3k counter overall. And the more cards that you allow them to take out of their hand, right, the more effective cards like Raju are 
right on the draw. But the 6k swing is all that they're going to need to be able to take that out. And top decking the Sanji. The Sanji, the new card in OPO7 that I was mentioning earlier. While you have two or more fewer Don cards than your opponent in your hand, this card costs three less and is a blocker. A 6 cost card normally, especially after a leader effect, is really, really nice to be able to play that guy down for only three dawn and since you have six dawn overall you can go ahead use this three four whatever you know swinging with these different characters if you want and then using the sanji to put a 6k blocker down for only three dawn so swinging five right now going to be swinging at the zoro and the zoro is knocked out the missile sunday is going to be swinging could be at life and it is it is going to be no trigger a 2k brook is nice you like to see that and with six dawn overall thinking about maybe deciding where exactly they want to do they could go five with the queen i think maybe that's kind of what they're thinking about at this point using the queen but the interesting thing about this situation is allowing the zoro to get ko'd right do you really want to use your leader effect on the magura at this stage of the game would it matter at all so attaching one dawn swinging six presumably at life is going to be countered out with the 2k brook one of those two that they have in hand and going to opt instead for a miss all sunday so again ramping some dawn and uh, getting a card off of the draw and looking like maybe they're thinking about using leader effect if you do use leader effect where do you go overall you see off of that miss all sunday draw they did get a kid and killer the zoro being at three life right now the killer kid does not get a boost in power but you could at this point really play down a beppo you can um also play down the Trafalgar Law if you want, although I don't know, maybe you're opting the Trafalgar Law to be at a point where you uh, you want to have a blocker, but going to be playing the Killer and Kid and saying, you know what, maybe this 5k swing is enough. So bottom decking the Magura and this 5k swing now is going to be going at lead. Very interesting that you use this stage of the game, you're using that 5k swing i would i don't know i mean you want to get the pressure on zoro because zoro can go super fast right with all the rush characters that it has available to them but going to be taking it on this one and a potential trigger it could be a radical beam could be a king kong gatling that king kong gatling right there has a trigger k up to one of your opponent's characters with 5000 power or less so looking at this this is a very interesting interaction because with the when attacking on the kid and killer it does say if your opponent has two or less life cards this character gains 2000 power during the turn and so that is a when attacking phase and not an ongoing phase at all looks like they opted for the miss all sunday i don't know i think i would have gotten rid of the kid and killer right because the kid and killer technically isn't seven thousand power when you take that life right because when they're attacking you're at three life so very interesting situation that you see there and on the eight dawn turn playing that monkey day dragon that monkey day dragon is very nice to be able to attach two rested dawn to a leader or character one of the new cards in opo7 and that 7k swing right now really just eyeing up on what you want to do so again with the gatling maybe i just don't know the ruling exactly yes you were at two life but you didn't get to two life before they started swinging or when they started the action of swing so i guess i'd I guess it'd be interesting to know how that interaction goes because I do think it's more valuable to take out the killer and kid if you can rather than the miss all Sunday. But they're at the top tables and I'm not. So maybe maybe what they did is actually better. I don't know. But anyways, with that monkey day dragon, again, like I said, on play, give a, your leader or up to one of your characters up to two rested dawn is really really nice but on top of that that eight cost nine thousand power character also has rush 
right? So not only do you have a 7K swing coming in from this Zoro because of the attached Dawn, this Monkey D Dragon is 10,000 power. And so either going at life or at a character, the Trafalgar Law is really evaluating at this point what they need to do. They know that these two swings are going to be coming. So what's the most efficient use of the Dawn? The Sanji there, the new OPO7 Sanji, is a 2K blocker at this point. So maybe thinking about using multiple cards to get out of this swing. And it's going to actually be at the Killer and Kid. That 7K swing at the Killer and Kid going to be really nice. And that 10K swing going to be taking a life. A 2K Otama, you love seeing a 2K at this point as they're at, I believe, 6 Dawn now in this one. Going to be grabbing a 3-drop Tony Chopper, one of the new additions from EB01 that have made their way into the deck in OP07. Is a blocker Dawn times 2 when attacking. Give up to one of your opponent's characters. Minus 3,000 power during the turn. Could put in a lot of work if it stays on the board in a matchup like this. But... Looking around now at this point, I think it's going to be really difficult to get rid of the Monkey Day Dragon, right? Because it's a 9,000 power character. You have the Otama. You have the Gordon, right? That's 5,000 power overall. That's still 4,000 power right there and 1,000 off of being able to get rid of that dragon. So that 5k swing from the Raju is just going to be a 1k counter out of the Robin there. You still have one or 2k counter plus the bad manners course kick in the hand and the miss all sunday is going to swing as well just again a lot of poke damage at this point for the trafalgar law player they are two dawn or less uh than the opponent so right now the sanji is a three cost character in their hand so with three dawn they could play a sanji tony chopper dual blocker down but i think one thing that you do have to be careful of is one diablo jambe right that is very effective for the zoro right because that diablo jambe could go for the zoro leader but also you got to worry about a rush luffy right that starter deck one luffy rushing in and being unblockable could negate your blockers overall so that 5k swing right there looks like it's going to be a potential trigger off of this. If this is another King Kong Gatling, could be KOing a 5,000 power or less. We'll see exactly what it is. Is that a Radical Beam? The Radical Beam could be nice because the Radical Beam does have that trigger of giving your leader or a character plus 1,000 power during the turn. Maybe thinking about potentially using it either on Zoro or the Dragon... Trafalgar Law plays a lot of these little swings, right? These a lot of uh, little check swings into the opponent, just slewing these bodies through and through. And so a 6,000 power leader could be really effective. And it does look like it's that alternate art of Radical Beam that I think we should be getting soon in English in a binder collection, if I'm not mistaken. But... If I'm the Zoro at this point, trying to think about what I... I think I would maybe keep this card in my hand, maybe not use this trigger, right? Unless you're... Hmm, it's going to be tough next turn. Like, you need to try to win this upcoming turn going down to one life. What are they going to do? And it looks like they are going to use it, going to be boosting their leader, their Zora leader, to 6,000 power. So now at 6,000 power, going to be really effective, actually, because with the 6 Dawn, right, they can put down the Tony Chopper. They can put down the Sanji. One thing that they could do overall is they could play down that Sanji, right? They are down 2 Dawn for 3. Attach 3 to the leader, right? swing eight at the 6k leader and then use leader effect not really bottom anything you lose three dawn which is unfortunate but you get to play the tony chopper from hand on the field so effectively using nine dawn in that situation so 
going to be interesting to see how they play this out. I don't know exactly what the best option would be. They also might be thinking about keeping the Sanji in hand because the Sanji is one of the 2k counter cards that they have in this deck. You don't want to lose too many 2k counters on the field and the Sanji, even though it is great to play it is also just effective in being able to prevent attacks especially when you can't get rid of these huge bodies like the monkey d dragon so think about what they want to do they still have over 10 minutes in this match it's we don't know how the other matches are going overall so far but going to be resting three going to be playing the tony chopper and the sanji so Looks like they were playing both of those and then playing the Beppo on top of that to get a Dawn opting not to swing with the leader overall. Probably just saying, okay, if you don't win this turn, I'm winning next turn, right? With all of these swings that I got. So the Zoro now really has to think about off of that Marco top deck. Are you going to clear board or are you going to go for game at this point? The Marco is nice because the Marco will get rid of the Tony Tony Chopper, right? With that on play effect, KOing a 3,000 power or less. Would K. Wait, does that. No, the Tony Chopper is 4,000 power. I'm sorry. It's a three cost 4,000 power. Sorry, still not used to the card yet. Anyways, so the Marco play is out entirely. That is just going to be used mainly for counter cards, right? At this point probably definitely going to be playing the Zoro, right you want another swing in this one going to be attaching one to the Zoro to boost up all characters with 1000 power and going to start off by swinging 10,000 power is this at life though or is this at a character in terms of swinging at life you would either block which you are going to with the tony chopper right there just utilizing that tony chopper overall saying you know what if you have a fire fist maybe from op05 that would ko that chopper for just to dawn so getting rid of that chopper right now just maximizing its potential on what you can use so Spreading out the Dawn a little bit. Got three, three, one, and two over there. And looking at the discard piles, exchanging discard piles to see what is exactly in there. Not a lot of cards overall. Maybe just reading the Gum Gum King Kong Gatling to know what it does overall. And the Zoro player looking through the Laws discard saying thank you very much. And really going here, I think this is a very tough spot for the Zoro, just looking at the hand overall, especially because that first one was blocked. You don't have any unblockable. <sighs> Sorry, it's like 1.30 a.m. where I am right now. I'm watching this live. Um, you don't have any unblockables with like Diable Jambe and stuff right now. So it's really difficult to be able to go at the law and go for game. So attaching two more Dons, swinging eight overall we'll see where this eight is going to go there's a couple different things though at this point that are very interesting so like every time you swing and they block it's almost like clearing a body right in some kind of instance is it more valuable i don't know but it's going to be interesting to see where it goes from here as the trafalgar law is going to go on a six Dawn turn this next upcoming turn. And so with this AK swing, they could, if they wanted to, pitch all of the counter in their hand, right? The Law, the Otama, and the Queen would be 9,000 power total. I think they're really just worried about right now because you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's perfect math for the unblockable Luffy, and that unblockable Luffy would be swinging 9,000 power into your law because of the boost with the Zoro ability. So, really just thinking about now, okay, what do I think my opponent is more likely going to do? at this point unfortunately what they don't know is that the opponent is probably going to play the Zoro down and then swing with the Zoro
Oh my gosh, only, already four minutes have gone by. There's only six minutes left in this game before we get to the overtime rules in this round. So really got to be thinking about decisions, but it'll be tough. It looks like as well, the red team already has one point. If you see in the top left corner over there, this is a new kind of graphic that they've had. One of the matches ended up winning. We can actually see what those matchups are if we go and rewind after this. So the Sanji, it looks like they're going to block with the Sanji and then use 3K worth of counter to get up to 9,000 power. So very interesting situation using the counter, but also going ahead and blocking as well only having 1000 counter in hand so going to be using the buggy right here the buggy has no counter in hand so is just as good and finding a radical beam so the radical beam is going to be really really nice in order to survive at this point with one radical beam in hand and a bad manners course kick with six Dawn left overall. We'll see if they actually play the Zoro at this point and then attach the rest of the two Dawn overall. It looks like they are going to play the Zoro right there, currently at 6,000 power. Could see one or two Dawn attached overall on the Zoro. It would be interesting to see at least one on there i think one is probably a safe bet they only have two cards in hand no blockers so probably just one on a seven thousand power swing is going to do the job right you would think so really just trying to think about what is the better idea you know is fainting two instead of just leaving one up for your rad beam does that make a difference at all in this game that's the real question that i think this law player is looking out for or are they really thinking about should i take out one of these characters right this sanji right here this sanji blocker is a 6000 power body so it looks like they're going to be attaching the two dawn swinging 8000 power at the sanji so the sanji being a 6k body is higher up than the 5k bodies so just opting to get rid of it saying okay you got to win with these cards now at this point with six Dawn, oh my gosh, top decking a killer and kid. The killer and kid is going to be instrumental in winning this game. And I think there's a decent likelihood that they could get it, especially because they can use all six of this Dawn. Use leader effect to bottom deck the buggy and play down the kid and killer for a final 7,000 power rush. So if you're distributing the Dawn, I say you could do something like a beppo maybe like just swing five with beppo see what happens see maybe what they can give you you know they have at least a radical beam in hand at this point and i believe i believe the brook that maybe they found you already saw because they trashed it earlier so they don't know that they have another brook in hand at this point so could be really curious about where this goes overall, especially with the numbers, the specific numbers could be really easy to counter out of, right? If you swing eight, right? The radical beam easily gets out of it. If you swing a seven, the bad manners course kick gets out of it. If you swing a six, the 2K brook gets out of it. And that's all not accounting for what the life is for the final life of Zoro. So two and a half minutes left in this game it looks like the blue team actually took a victory as well in this one so this game three decides which team advances through the tournament so with the sixth on again decisions need to be made soon time is running out but i think we're at the near end stages of the game it will be ending either this turn i think or next turn it'd be really hard to get out of this if you're the uh, law player and you don't win this turn so it looks like they're going to be attaching two and two preventing a gum or uh the the jet pistol right a jet pistol trigger after you attach the dawn does not ko these characters they have to be 6,000 power or less to be able for that trigger to ko them so putting the dawn on these 
characters, preemptively saving them in case this character takes the life, especially with this, you know, very small 5,000 power swing is really nice because like with this, it forces them to do something right with only four cards in hand. It's very possible that they don't have very many options to be able to counter out of unknowingly that all of these cards can use some sort of counter, but then puts them in this awkward situation, right? If you use the Marco, pitch off the 5k swing, right? Then your bad manners course kick either has to get rid of the brook, the radical beam, or whatever this final life is, which honestly, in, unless the uh, final life is a non-counter card, just feels bad overall, right? So really thinking about in this situation, do I want to over counter on this? Do I want to just use the minimal counter on this because it is the first of potentially four more swings trying to think about how you can get out of four more swings overall and i see a world where they get out of two of them the third one hits the life and that last life needs to be something crazy right so especially because you know that there's probably going to be several uh swings as we hit the time so it looks like this player the zoro player is turn zero right now and so in the time rules this player's turn zero the law player will be turn one turn two goes back to the law and then turn three to the law again and after turn three if you know the game is completed i believe it's life and so they're going to take the easy route out going to be just countering out one there and so the 7k reju swing is going to really force them at this point again going to have to be this is really interesting because the bad manners course kick does get rid of it it looks like it's going to be one of the better cards that they could have actually gotten right there Taking that life, going to be another 7k swing. You could do something like the Bad Manners Course Kick, get rid of the Monkey Day Dragon, another 7k swing. And it looks like they're actually just going to be short that 9k Radical Beam. And then with the leader effect, getting the kill Kid and Killer and only being able to match it overall. So the Monkey Day Dragon did help overall, but it looked like the Trafalgar Law just with the perfect amount of math. The Miss All Sundays actually doing really big help in that game, being able to lay those down, ramp a dawn, draw cards to be able to get the effective amount that you wanted. So looking at this now, they were table three. This was the red team, red team one, one, and then red team two loss so let's check out the matchups to see exactly what it was in terms of the matchups that they had right here i know we saw them so it looks like in this one just for all you matchup heads in the chat looks like the monkey d luffy black yellow deck ended up beating the trafalgar loss starter deck 10 not the game that we watched obviously because the game that we watched was table three between these two but it looks like the anel the anel ended up beating the new op07 rob lucci so that's something interesting to note if you're worried about the rob lucci going into the op07 format and maybe if you're looking for a potential uh counter to law maybe you're seeing a lot of law at locals especially in opo 7 you can maybe throw in your monkey day luffy character leader person black yellow from your starter deck 13 and battle that one out but that's going to be all for this one thank you so much for watching we'll continue to do the rest of the tournament in future videos it's really late so i'm going to try to get these out as fast as possible but again it's like 2 a.m now where i live so it might be like a good 10 hours before the next episode. Anyways, thank you so much. Subscribe for more. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to see more of this.